Brennan, I'm so excited to finally be sitting down with you. I don't know how long, I don't know if you know how long I've been wanting to talk to you. Um, <laughs> you're basically like this trap yoga extraordinaire. I'm going to give you that title. <laughs> I'll take that, I'll take that, I'll take that. I'll take you're that. the founder of Kepra Wellness Group, where you are a trap yoga instructor, right? Yeah. And um, I know there are people watching where it's like, what is trap yoga? You know, or maybe they know what trap music is, they know what yoga is, but how do the two come together. Mm -hmm. So if you could explain that. And like, how did you get this different things in one yeah. place? Um, well, trap yoga is kind of, it was natural mm -hmm. like synthesis for me. It wasn't like, well, how can I get in on this trap music like thing, yeah. right? Um, I'm from Atlanta. And so I grew up listening to your early trap pioneers beyond, you know, of course, T.I. and Gucci, but like Outkast and I mean, even music like James Brown or, you know, my father's really into music production. So music has always been a really influential part of how I feel. And, you know, yoga became that for me in college. Um, and so when I started to practice, I practiced very, I don't want to say traditionally, but very American traditionally, like trying to like figure out, should I be vegan or should I not be vegan? You know, like <laughs> these questions that really have nothing to do with my life yeah. um, at the time. Um, and just felt disconnected from the practice for a, a while. Like I really loved it in itself, right. um, but the community and culture that surrounded it wasn't one that reflected who I was and what I was going through at Howard at the time. Why do you say that? Uh, it was all white women, yeah. um, and it was not that they weren't cool people. Like they're, you know, they're people, and they're cool people um, in those spaces. But for me, like I said, I was at Howard University, a young black shout man. Out to yeah, yes. shout out to HU. You know, <laughs> you know, you know. That's right. You got to get the hand in hey. there. Um, but no, it was, it was, it was very different from the experience, but so juxtaposed. Like I was at Howard, and I would sometimes skip class if I didn't feel like it. <laughs> Sorry, professors. Um, right, it's all good. But go and take yoga, and it would be like two or three blocks away, and I feel like I was sneaking off um, and not, like, to not tell my friends, like, because it was just so different a world. It's like telling my friends, like, yeah, I make pottery, and they're like, like, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> Why pottery? Right, and I mean, because it's just things that I think culturally we do things um, differently, but we we almost buy into this like monolithic it's idea like of what it is to be black, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think that, I think for me, I in having bought into that just like anyone else, I'm not above it. I just didn't think it was something that my friends would be interested in. Um, and accepted that in going into the space. And so long story short, I didn't find or feel any of those things that had originally made me feel at ease, music and culture and blackness, you know, yeah. um, in those spaces. and almost felt as if I had to divorce that from myself um, when I entered those spaces. And for me, that was very troubling yeah. um, because the benefits helped the rest of my life. You know, when I went back to school, I felt better. I was having Linux at the time and that helped me become a better father. And so I really went through a period where I was upset that I couldn't marry these two worlds that I was, you know, one foot in one, one foot in the other together. And so after a lot of, you know, after a lot of going back and forth and kind of letting one bleed into the the other, but like, and just being like, okay, like telling my friends, like I do yoga now and having them be like, yeah, okay, sure. So what was like some of their responses when you told them? Um, their disbelief or more like you're doing it for the girls or more like you, all of the irrationale. Really? You know, so it yeah. was never just like, oh, you like yoga, that's some, dope. Some a few friends, okay. a few friends were like that, but most of the time, like, like when I said I was the only one there, it wasn't because they didn't open the doors to us. It was just because we weren't there doing it. Mm -hmm. Like they were, they were less than you know a quarter mile from our very black university right. in a black city, and I was still finding pockets with before gentrification at the time. Well, at the very beginning. Um, in like like there are crackheads outside of the class <laughs> while we're trying to like like you know that like it's so like and, and there's this throng of white people in, yes. the, in the room right and so I, it's almost like I was finding those spaces um, and like I said DC just had other things going on at the time and so I left all of the spaces that I was teaching at um, and started my own space and tried to mimic them at first but then eventually got tired of that I just wasn't happy mm -hmm. um, because I was trying to start and do something in a way that I'd never seen before. Um, and it would just, it just boiled off all the fat. It just got me to what do you want to do? Like, you know, I had to be very honest with myself. I went home, like one day I came home and broke down. Like I was yeah. like, nobody wants to do this, but I thought, you know, and and so I, I ended up going, um, I was like, well, you're not, who are you, who are you, who is your student? Like, who are you looking for? Yeah. And I literally thought, well, I just want to teach yoga to black people. Yeah. And it was like, ding. 
<laughs> like, it was like, it was literally like, dang. Yeah. I think that at first I was very worried that having a black yoga studio or being a black yoga teacher that focused on black people was divisive or offensive or because I was thinking at it from a lens that was the white woman that I'd seen teaching yeah. for the past however long. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have to do it this way. And what that way was, I ended up realizing was I wanted to teach yoga to black people. And so how did I wanna do that and what would I wanna come to? Well, trap yoga. Um, and then so once Chase, uh, a friend of mine from Howard, who's this DJ now, um, started to, it was right around that time, 2011, 2012, he started to, um, he, he played me this song called 16 Chapels. Uh -huh. And I heard it and I was just like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. <laughs> and so I really fell in love with the music. That coincided with the time that I was really doing yoga and like trying to, you know, figure out how to fit it into that feeling that I was getting, you know? Um, and so then Trap Yoga, for me, was born long ago. Yeah. And then when I had to try and reach the people that I wanted to, to represent Kepra and become what Kepra is, I had to, you know, give them a piece of myself and that's what that's what trap yoga was and you say that like when you listen to trap music while doing yoga it does relax you it does like bring well, a certain peace right they, no oh. <laughs> <laughs> no no i think that's what people think so I, what, what what it does i think the peace that you would get during the practice is the willingness to go the extra mile Got it. i wouldn't listen to a trap yoga class and be laying down so it's like motivation. Yes, okay. absolutely. And I think that that is one of the things that for me is the larger, you know, light bulb that I think people should, should see is not that trap music and yoga can be done together. It's that there's a yoga that can stand up to that mm. base, that can stand up to the message, that can stand up to really anything, the grit that you find in it, you know, like there's a practice that is hard you okay. know it's yeah. you, it, you need to push you need to you know you're not going to get it all this first time you know what i'm saying you're going to have to do this and grind and find things within yourself that will let you stand on your hands you know what i'm saying yeah. all of these things that that are not just that you know there are other things that you work through within it i mean emotions and all kinds of things that the practice um internally you know uh brings up in your body uh, and in your mind and in your spirit and all of these different things but the medium through which you relate to those answers and, and the medium through which I was able to push myself and evolve was, you know, was trap music. That's, what I, that's always how I'd always push myself physically, but the emotion and the, um, I think the rawness behind it emotionally is an interesting mix with yoga because it's so much about being there but letting go. It's almost yeah. like hustling. Like I know that there's money on the street, right? And it's like, if I want to be, I can't be in it. I can't want it. You know, you you get you. It's you have to be cool. I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. It's yeah. more like a. It's more like the chase is what you're there for. Yeah. You're ultimately there to hustle, not because I can get X, Y, and Z. It's it's what I think separates trap music from other genres of hip hop is that it's always about the action of going to get more, um, and going to do more and being better and realizing where the mistakes that you made. Like Future's basically a blues singer. You know, like it's all about like how and you know it's a philosophical kind of thing and so i think and, it, and that reflects in the music and for me that was something that just naturally married with the style of yoga that i was doing and i love how you cater towards black people i like that you pushed and did that because you said that you had you were thinking about it like should you or, like, should I be people of color it, yoga right. of the world <laughs> <laughs> but i think it's important just like anything because it's almost like what people say i'm gonna use the example of like black lives matter where it's like oh we, but all lives matter yeah and all lives, lives matter, matter you guys have your thing or whatever yeah. like but it's like you don't get it like we do something of course. our own because like you said when you usually go to yoga classes and stuff like that you don't see a lot of us so it's mm -hmm. kind of making us more comfortable and mm -hmm. like willing to do it and things like that so I love that yeah, I commend you. you for that thank you um so what would you say like even just first getting into yoga um what was that defining moment for you to be like okay I kind of like this or I'm gonna keep pushing <laughs> I know this. exactly what it was I can tell you the pose I was yeah in. tell me um I was doing so I had so I'd taken, back in the day when I was a young man, right? <laughs> Groupon had just come out. Yes. <laughs> and Groupon I was- Groupon is good for the yoga deals. It is, it is. <laughs> but the point is, with Groupon, um, we had Groupons. I went and took some classes. I thought they were okay and cool. Um, my son is coming and I'm like very nervous. I'm a sophomore at Howard, maybe. Yeah. And like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
And so I went, I kept taking yoga because it was the thing that I could do that wasn't like some sort of substance, <laughs> you know, that was like, you know, very available at the time as a sophomore in college. And so it just helped me find peace. And I was always an athletic person, physical person. And so being able to l just release physically has always been something. And I think yoga like. can kind of give you like that high, like oh, almost yeah. like, because I do yoga too and I do meditation as <laughs> yes, well. And yeah, I think it's good. all like, yeah, high five. Can I, I high five for that? Boom, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. But people, I wish that more people like knew about it because it really can give you that high or like the thing that you need to start your day and it just brings you back to mm -hmm. center. But sorry, I don't want to interrupt. No, it's okay. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you brought yeah. that point up. It does have a lot of a lot to do because I was studying psychology at the time too, mm -hmm. and so I'm very, I've always been very interested in the way neurotransmitters and chemicals in your brain mm -hmm. and physical movement. How does that affect our experience? Like the whole concept of us being alive and this being an experience has mm -hmm. always been really, you know, in, like a driver for me. And so finding something in the middle, and I'm telling you back to the story, in the middle of this class where all of these people that I don't look like, I'm younger than everybody. Yeah. I'm the only, one of the only men there, and I'm the only black person. It might be another one in the back, what's up? You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, it was like that. And so I went into the class, and it's, it's whooping my butt, I yeah. will <laughs> say, right? It's, it's going, like, they're just, and they're not stopping, and everybody in the room seems to know what's going on, even though the teacher is just saying words like, with no description. He's like this, this, one, two, three, boom, boom. And it's, I was just like, where, I just stepped into something, you know, that I, you know, it's serious. And so as I kept going with the practice, the practice itself has this kind of magic where it makes you, it is a, an instruction. And so the more that you listen to it and the more that you allow it to take you where you want to go and the more you pull yourself out of, oh, that hurts, I don't want this, it transforms you. And so by the end, I was in uh, Karmasana, which is a pose about, I'd say 50 minutes into this sequence. Mm -hmm. the sequence I still practice to this day. And I'm laying flat on the ground, legs straight, and my shoulders are underneath my knees, yeah. and my hands are back. Yeah. It's called tortoise pose, and because you look like a turtle. <laughs> and so I'm in this pose, and I go to like, because in a yoga practice, you, it, it comes in waves. The poses change, you go through each side. And so I go to like react, like I, I you know, to resist and physically I just couldn't yeah but mentally it just clicked like that's okay like you're supported you're still you're in this very extreme position but if you just let go then the position will take care of itself you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying and for me I think that structure with the ability to release and let go along with the fact that everybody in the room was having this completely different experience at first but then by the end we were all like jovial and nice to each exactly. other it was like it was it was mind-blowing for me studying psych at the time and yeah. so from it's there like I was thing yeah too. yeah completely yeah completely so why do you think that there's not as many black people who do yoga or why it's kind of like a stigma of like a white people white thing? thing well I think it's I think it was co-opted by a very white supremacist society mm. in a way where you know like not even that that's you know, not to run off the rail of, yeah. you know, white supremacy rules, everything. <laughs> but, you know, I think that it things that have been associated with purity have also often been co-opted from other cultures, as you can see, with the practice of yoga, um, but then tried to be dominated as representative of white culture, right? Like, the white, like, there are reasons that a lot of times in the past that we were, you know, subjected to the lesser jobs of cleaning things and doing all these other things while you know, teachers were white or like people of high esteem, doctors, they were the ones who were allowed to be um, representatives of those groups. And I think as something that is elective, um, yoga is something that just was available to be had, I think at the time. It was very popularized in, you know, very white spaces like Beverly Hill, California, yeah. um, with Bikram who's huge or like other groups. Um, and I think that there are things that I think liberal white society in general have just kind of taken as their own, like feminism or all of these, you know, progressive things, psychedelics, you know, these things that we don't associate necessarily with blackness. Um, I think that that got wrapped up in that. And I think that the images and things, because it didn't have a predecessor in America that was largely, you know, one of ours, it wasn't, I, we weren't the people of color that created it, right? They yeah, were all across, you know, the ocean. We didn't have any, I don't think we had a foothold within um, understanding what the benefits of it were and how accessible it was and that it was something that we could do. 
Um, for the same reason we don't do Tai Chi, you know, like it's just not one of our things. Do you um, wish that more black people knew about it and then it was like one of our... They, like, I think it is becoming like yeah, that now, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that for me at the time in seeking do I, what is it, truth and service, I always, truth and service. I always put them backwards and forwards, I always say service <laughs> and truth. But truth and service, and trying to figure out, okay, what is true? What can I do to help the black person near me mm -hmm. that isn't selling them anything? Because I can't, I, I was raised by Baptist preachers, you know what I'm saying? So I know how to tell you about how you're supposed to be doing it. But I didn't want to have, I didn't want anything between people and their evolution or what Kepra means. Like, how can I get... How can I best help? And that's why I was interested in psychology. How can we figure out what the problem is so that people can heal themselves? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we didn't understand, and most people didn't understand, I mean, in the past 20 years, let alone the past 40 or 50, what mindfulness and mental health, you know, were, how important that is. Right. Um, I think that we always, you know, play ball or we did other things to relieve, you know, yeah. stress. And a lot of times we didn't and died of heart disease and all kinds of things because I don't think we as a group understood the value of ourselves, um, of the value of ourselves. We didn't understand that, you know, you have to take care of your mental health. You have to react to things in your community that are, are not just because they're literally killing you. And I think now that, you know, especially with movements like you were saying, like Black Lives Matter and um, just the age of technology that we're in today, the fact that no one can really pigeonhole you into a place on Google, you know, you can yeah. figure out, okay, what is, the, like I, today, for instance, I've started salsa dancing just because. Oh, good. You know but you, I think because that's available now, then yeah, absolutely. We, I don't wish that we would latch onto yoga, we are. And okay. we're creating spaces, and I think that's why Trap Yoga itself is, is known beyond the, the walls of this country, because we've been looking for that representative, um, you know, space and wellness. I love that. Okay, so really quick, even though I feel like this is going to be a long uh, yeah, I'll be rapping, conversation. I'll be <laughs> no, but I really want to uh, ask you this. Just what do you to say talk. to the people who like are scared to do yoga because of religious beliefs? Like they mm. feel like it might interfere with their religious practices because it might come from, you know, the Buddhism. Yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, one, I'll say um, that respect how you feel. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna tell you you're crazy because you're worried about your connection with God or mm -hmm. whoever you, mm -hmm. you know, Allah, whoever you yeah. um, worship. But I will say that yoga in itself is a practice and a philosophy, a practice first and a philosophy second. So that being said, it can be done with different intentions in mind. It can be done with. I mean, it's a physical thing. Like we're doing it right now, you know. Like you, like I'm sitting up. Right. You know exactly. what I'm saying. So it's 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 because it's a physical thing, and it is a connection with the vessel through which whoever you believe in is communicating with you, and how you're experiencing mm -hmm. life. I'd say it, do your best to weave your faith within the yoga practice. Um, I look I look at it, and it's funny because yoga and wellness practices are represented in, in represented in Christian religions and other religions, yeah. and you know. Um, um, there's, you know, prayer, which is basically meditation, you know what I'm saying? Being still and listening to, you know, listening not to yourself, but to God, right? And so that is a lot like clearing your mind with meditation, which is the ultimate goal of yoga. So I think that if, if you're okay with facing your inner demons through a practice that is going to just, and by inner demons, I mean literally physically trapped emotions in your body, like that you might live with all the time, um, and you can do that in a way that satisfies your religious experience and religious beliefs, and then I think that that, that it's it's a win-win. Um, I don't I think yoga is honestly a, a bridge because we all have bodies. There are different stories that we all you know believe in and, and beliefs that we all have, but we all have a body and we all have this experience. And yoga translates beyond you know the things that we believe is is, is what we can feel. Um, and so I. If you are interested and know anyone who's on here, I'd love to, you know, talk with people that have connections in churches and things like that because I think that all of this practice, and it's set to be like this, but it, it physically and spiritually is supposed to bring you closer to God. Yeah. And the pathway to that, however it's colored, I think, and which is why I like it so much, is is fine. The the what how it it, it in itself, like they say, it's 99% practice, 1% theory. 
So whatever your thoughts are about what's going on is completely fine. I just want you to get to the point where you're focused on this moment and experiencing God as is presented in your body and in reality and in regular life. I think you explained that so well because I try to, because people ask me that and I'm just like, you know, I feel like I keep God on my mind the whole time that I'm yeah, doing it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? there, it's part of the tenets yeah. of the plan. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for coming on here. You shared so much insight, and I really, really appreciate you. Of course. Anytime. I'm happy to be here, and I'm very excited about what you're doing thank and sharing you. wellness. Thank you. Uh, you're just as important to this movement that we're trying to uh, bring to people as, as I am. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that so much.